Hey there friends, welcome back to Hesman Thicket on Yonasa TV. Today I want to talk about bees because there's something very, very strange going on with bees today. And I'm not just talking about the beehive collapses that we uh, discussed earlier this year. They've come up with some solutions to that. They've blamed it on mites and uh, mite resistance to some of the pesticides that uh, beekeepers have been putting into their hives. Uh, but there's something else that's been going on. There's been some very, very strange behavior coming out of bees that's been reported around the world, really. And, and then if you look at bee aggression, it seems to be on the rise, particularly in early 2025. So I'm going to go through some of these bee aggression uh, incidents. And these are just the incidents that have been reported. You know, it's not every day that somebody reports bee stings to the news media or that they're willing to cover it. So these are just incidents that have been reported and then going beyond that, um, you can imagine how many of these incidences are actually happening. So in early 2025, April 27th, a man was mowing near a vacant building. The bee swarmed, attacked, he ran, got into his car, he ended up crashing, he ended up dying later on due to cardiac arrest because of the bee stings. On April 27th, Eastland police were called out to a crash that was in the 700 block of North Lamar Street. When officers approached the vehicle, they discovered the driver was being swarmed by bees. Officers quickly evacuated the driver from the area, placing him in a police vehicle, a safe distance to avoid any further bee stings. While in the ambulance, the driver became unresponsive and later succumbed to his injuries at the hospital. And then in May of 2025 in Comanche, Texas, Africanized bees allegedly attacked ranch horses and owners. Three beloved rodeo horses were killed. The bees killed three horses. There essentially was uh, first responders that responded to a phone call talking about uh, a bee attack that were attacking a bunch of these horses. Um, so unfortunately, when first responders did arrive, they kind of realized that the situation was very much intense. There were a lot of bees and um, not much that they could really do in that situation. They also knew that the owners who were, you know, trying so hard to get these horses away from this beehive, it just, it just w was not working. And so the owners ended up getting stung by these bees in addition to the first responders. Um, the next thing that they did try to do is a couple of them put on some bee suits and tried to pull away the horses from the beehive. Um, and then the final thing that they attempted to do was to uh, put soap with the water in the fire truck's water tank and attempted to stop the bees by pouring soapy water on them. So they pretty much tried to do a bunch of these, these different things to get these horses away from um, the bees or more like the bees away from the horses. But unfortunately, the situation was just too far gone. But on June 5th in India, a sudden swarm attacked police officers at a police training facility. So we're looking at a timeline now where early in the year we've had three events, which initially when I read those three back to back, it started to raise some eyebrows for me. But then we got into July. Many of you have probably heard about the France attack in July because bees attacked 24 people in a sustained bee attack, which means that they just kept coming. Bee stings in France, in this one little tiny town, 24 people were injured, three critically. And they believe what happened is that, according to the mayor, the incident may have been related to Asian hornets threatening a beehive that was in a roof terrace of a downtown hotel. And that happened more than a decade ago, those Asian hornets. But he believes, who knows if this is true, uh -huh. that this likely caused the bees to become aggressive because mm. they were basically fighting with the hornets. So passerbys, though, were stung over a period of about 30 minutes on Sunday morning. Um, firefighters, medical teams, they raced out there. Police even set up a security perimeter. Um, three people were evacuated in critical condition, obviously, with an allergy wow. to bees. Yeah. And it's just not something, one of them was a 78 year old person. They had to be resuscitated after cardiorespiratory arrest. They're now in stable condition. The others are in good health. Um, wow. You know, we've heard of killer bees a long time ago. Sure. Um, and it almost sounds like this is the case. Now this happened in a more metro area. And I think that we'll get a little bit into that. But the fact that this also happened into July um, and, and when you hear these other reports, you'll start to see a pattern here. In Scottsdale, Arizona, two workers in their 60s 
were attacked by a swarm of bees. Chase, what happened? Tram, Scottsdale, please tell us it was a group of three workers that were actually on the roof here at the V at Silverstone Retirement Community here in Scottsdale. They were on the roof when they were attacked by a swarm of bees. I actually just spoke with someone who lives here at the community. While he didn't see it happen, he said that he heard a bunch of screaming earlier today and then learned it was a bee attack. Now, we were told that all three of those workers were rushed to the hospital by um, Scottsdale Fire. Uh, we learned that two of those workers are now in stable condition, but unfortunately one of them did die at the hospital from their injuries. On July 25th in Santee, California, again, bees attacked a sleeping grandmother in a lawn chair. She did nothing to provoke the hives. This isn't the typical call the Osdado San Roque responds to while on the job with Happy Plumbing. Oh, just a normal plumbing day. San Roque and his partner finished a plumbing job in Santee when they drove into a swarm of bees. They just started like forming a clump on our tree. Kyle Ritchie says his mother-in-law ran inside after the bees started attacking her while she was taking out the trash. While Ritchie was taking care of her, they realized she wasn't the only person outside. They wanted to check on uh, my wife's grandma, too, because she was taking a nap in the yard and we came out and she was covered in bees. Video shows them spraying the insects with raid and pouring rubbing alcohol on their bodies for protection. That's when Sandroque pulled up to the scene. I, I knew that somebody's grandma and like kind of got a flashback of my grandma and I knew I just, you know, how to do something about it. Too weak to keep running after hundreds of stings. Video shows Richie's grandmother-in-law, Juana, leaning on the car to hold herself up as Sandroque approached. She spoke to me in Spanish telling me that she's about to faint. When she collapsed, he caught her before her head hit the ground, trying to drag her away from the swarm. I was just trying to wipe all the bees off her, but once I started doing that, they, they came at me. His partner sprayed a fire extinguisher over them, struggling to disperse the bees, but Sandroque Okay, says they stung him at least 20 to 30 times while trying to shield Juana from the swarm. I was trying to take the bees my way and get it off the lady, but once I did that, I got into our cabin. Until about 10 minutes later, the Santee Fire Department arrived with a helicopter using the strong winds to clear out the crowd of bees. On July 10th, in Barber County, Alabama, officials trapped and humanely euthanized a feral swarm of killer bees, also known as Africanized bees. And the Alabama Department of Agriculture has killed a swarm of Africanized honeybees in Jackson and St. Clair counties. Uh, you should report any unusually aggressive bee behavior to the department. I'm uh, sorry, it just got to look scary. Yeah. And, and aggressive is not a word I want to hear in relation to bees. Uh, that's just, just one bee I'm running. Right. Uh, yeah. If I see that many, I'm going to duck under. Yellow just jackets tables. are really yeah. nasty. Those mm -hmm. are, if you've ever been stung by one of those, those are pretty rough too. So, uh, but uh, not many of anything, and I'm going to go the other way, right? <laughs> now you're going to you're going to hear a lot of people talk about when the when the bees die off the the mites. You're going to hear a lot of people talk about Africanized bees, but not all of these reports are Africanized bees. Sometimes the solution to what's going on or the cause of what's going on isn't so simple. On July 29th in Houston, Texas, there was another bee incident involving a baseball game and a large outdoor hive. So we have hive die-offs, the, 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 the most hive die-offs globally we've ever seen before. And now we're seeing these reports of aggression increasing since the beginning of the year. They've actually been increasing. These attacks um, have increased. They're, just, they, they're happening more frequently. They're making the news more frequently. So between June of 2024 and May of 2025, you start seeing increasing reports of hive die-offs. Um, these hive die-offs started around 62%. By the time we got to the end of the winter, the overwinter hive die-off was up over 70%. It was stunning scientists around the world. There have also been, during this time, some behavioral issues, other than the aggression ones that I've uh, mentioned to you, that are quite odd for beehives. So one of the things that I have been looking into, we've, we've heard about the mites as a cause for the beehive collapses. However, a lot of beekeepers also noted that there were hives that had almost the entire adult population missing. The brood was completely healthy, the adult population was gone. Some people would blame that on pesticides, some people blamed it on other issues. And I did a video earlier this year where there was a, uh, a farm 
where a lot of the adult bees had just come out and died, they blamed it on pesticides. But when you start putting all of these things together, there might be something bigger going on here. It could be a warning to all of us. Honeybees possess magnetite-based magnetorceptors used for orientation, comb alignment, spatial memory, and geolocation during foraging. These receptors in these bees are acutely sensitive to geomagnetic changes. Magnetic disturbances led to failed homing behavior in honeybees. Jamal et al., a study published in 2015, identified a near-perfect correlation between high geomagnetic activity and mass forager disappearance. So taking those studies into mind and looking at all of these situations unfolding, this isn't just Africanized honeybees. This isn't just a situation where there are pests invading the hives. And, and I'm gonna get into how those pests may, how the, my theory plays into those pests invading their hives. But I think the colony collapse disorder that we've seen, the, the behavioral issues that we've seen, have more to do with geomagnetic activity than anything else. There have been some concerning intensifications of geomagnetic activity during solar cycle 25. Uh, and I say it's concerning because if you look back at past solar cycles and you look back at the larger uh, solar cycle systems, not the 11 year cycle, but the larger cycles, uh, what you'll generally see is just before you enter a period that we would call a, a minimum period, a grand solar minimum period where the sun becomes less active for an extended period of time. And that is concerning because if that happened today with 8 billion people on the, on the planet, we wouldn't be able to eat. We wouldn't be able to feed all those people. Part of the reason why we're able to feed that many people is because of having a rather steady hundred years or so of solar activity. Solar influx has been has been pretty steady. It's created the optimal growing conditions for mankind's population to really explode. But when you enter into a, a minimum period, all of that changes. The entire geomagnetic activity on our planet changes because we get a lot of that energy from the sun. And what we've seen right before each and every single one of those periods of time is that we've seen that the sun acts very erratically like it has in solar cycle 25. A lot of people were pretty excited at the beginning of 2025 of the solar cycle 25 because they were like, well, activity's taking off, it's higher than anticipated. This whole theory that we're going into a grand solar minimum is null and void but that's not actually what happened. It took off fairly quickly. It got very erratic as it reached its peak at the end of 2024, 2025, which is when we started seeing some of this abnormal activity in bees. And then since then, since its peak, it's actually been crashing pretty hard, which is very similar to every solar cycle, 11 year cycle that has preceded a grand solar minimum period. I'm just throwing this out there. This is science, these are studies. And while not all scientists agree on this or all scientists agree on the effects of this, this is what the pattern shows. And what we have seen is an increase in solar activity of a very erratic sun over the past couple of years. And it's, it's sent auroras as far south as North Carolina. I sat in a lawn chair and watched them one year. So solar cycle 25 has a lot to do with what we're seeing in bee activities. And I say that as well because we've seen some strange behavior with animal migration patterns. Keep this in mind though, if solar cycle 26 is the beginning of a grand solar minimum period, it may exacerbate these disruptions because a grand solar minimum would chronically destabilize Earth's electromagnetic system. Let me go back now to some of these massive erratic solar events and, and correlate those with the timeline of when we see hive collapse, aggressive activity from bees, and some of these reports of strange behavior. On May 10th through the 13th of 2024, we experienced what we called the Gannon storm. It was a G5 event. It was the most severe geomagnetic storm in over two decades. In June and October of 2024, additional G4 storms were recorded. Remember, the G5 was the most powerful in 20 years, and then you're, you turn around and June through October, you see a series of these G4 storms hitting. This June through October 2024 period coincide with when we started seeing these reports of unusual activity within bees, with, with adult bees leaving the hives, with bee colonies collapsing between June and, and 
the beginning of this year is when we started to see that massive beehive collapse happen. Then in June of 2025 this year, you had multiple G2 through G3 uh, solar storm events, and you start getting more and more of these reports of bees just ferociously attacking people, horses, animals, whatever they can. And some of you guys might think this is kind of crazy to be talking about the solar system and, and how it may impact bees. I was talking about grand solar minimums earlier, and what we found throughout history and studies is that there was a, a, a substantial amount of colony die-off and, and bee mortality and migration issues during both the Dalton minimum and the Maunder minimum. So what we're seeing right now is reflective of this theory when you apply it to past minimum periods. There's also been some studies during two solar eclipses of, of bee activity in 1999 and 2004. And during these periods where there was unusual geomagnetic activity, bees got lost, they, they failed to return to their hive, they went silent, they stopped functioning. I think the truth is in the science, people. If bees are suffering from geomagnetic interference from the sun during this period of time from June of 2024 until now, uh, it would also disrupt their immune system and their immune system and their ability to respond to pests like mites, which would allow mites to be able to attack a hive. Anytime a hive is weakened from anything, it opens the door to be attacked. The, the situation in France the hive was being attacked by hornets. But again, if the bees are disoriented, they're not fully functioning, that's going to inhibit their ability to properly protect their hives. So there's, to say that the mites were there and that's what caused it, isn't to rule out the fact that there's a bigger issue here involved. Remember, we're talking about not just the hives themselves, but behavioral issues, aggression issues. And the fact that bees are so in tune with geomagnetic forcings, it's impossible to look at the activity that we've seen and say, no, it's not correlated. Now our substack, I've actually gone into a little more detail about how these events would have actually given the Varroa mites a hand up in attacking beehives and how that all lays out. And so if you want more detailed information on this, I'm not gonna put it all in a video, we'd be here all day. Um, definitely check out the Unasa TV substack and it'll give an explanation for the Varroa mites. Anyway, guys, I wanted to do this video because I think the bees are a warning sign. I think they're the canary in the coal mine, especially when you look at the act recent activity on the Pacific Rim. And I'm gonna do a different video on this because yes, the ring of fire has actually gotten more active. It's a lot more active this year than it has been in previous years. And it would only become more active actually during the grand solar minimum period because our geomagnetic forcings of the planet will become destabilized. They'll change dramatically during that time frame. What we're seeing right now are the repercussions of a sun in its last hurrah before going to sleep. If this science is correct, like I said, there are lots of scientists out there with different theories on this stuff. Nobody knows for sure. I'm not discounting it at this point in time. Anyway, guys, stay tuned for more here on Unasa TV. I've got a lot of videos for you. It's just a matter of recording them and getting them out. And tune into Unasa TV's Substack where you can get a more in-depth analysis on a lot of this stuff.